And we are in a stage where we have to start preparing because they're coming after our, our, all of our rights. And that's why we've got Chuck in here today. We're going to ask him about these vaccine incentives and how they're coming after the people and their medical decisions by the influence of evil, which is money. And that's biblical, too. That's right. And Chuck, if if you're just joining us, we have Chuck Erickson. I gave him a big little lead in before we went to break. But Chuck is not only an attorney at law here in McLean County, but he also uh, serves as McLean County board member. Um, he is someone who has led the charge on opening McLean County from day one. This was last year. He's very, he's an activist. I'm going to say that. I'm going to come out and say that. I've challenged Chuck on many occasions and I've seen the fruits of his labor because he's one of the lone voices, conservative voices on the McLean County board. And folks, I'm going to tell you, if ever you thought that politics was a national game or a statewide game, it's not. It's no. a local game. It starts right with our school boards, our library boards. I mean, that's coming We've up seen on... seen it time and time again here in Bloomington Normal. As soon as something comes out, as soon as you start going to the school boards, then you start to see it uh, take place at the national stage. That's when they start to wake up is when things like this happen locally and when conversations happen in places like Bloomington Normal. And, and I'm not, I don't want to go too deep in the woods because I want to give Chuck an opportunity to give us all the information that he has in regards to what's current events here from the McLean County Board perspective. But if you're, if you're with us out there, there is an event, we'll put it up on Facebook, that Tuesday night at the Bloomington Library, there is a board meeting and some of those discussions that are going to be had there are going to be public comment in regards to some of the placement of content and books that seem to get into uh, a precarious position where young people could actually see them and they're very graphic and I would go as far as saying pornographic. Um, and so, but don't want to contact state's attorney Don Knapp and ask him to prosecute, honestly. Uh, well, and you know, there's just, there's just a lot out there and Chuck... You see this happening and have seen this happening uh, over the past few years that we've been building towards this point. And especially with the COVID debacle. And when I say debacle, I'm not talking about the real virus that has consumed our economy, consumed our world in the past 18 months. I'm talking about the debacle of making decisions coming out of this, like the one that the board has recently decided to make where they're going to pay people $1,000 to get vaccinated. Yes, what happened was the... Hold on, Jack. I got to get your mic closer. My mic's oh, yeah. closer? Uh, you got to have about a fist, fist away. There you go. All right, All right. there we go. Now you go. Can you now hear can me you, now? Well, I'm like I'm a, hope the audience It's a Verizon commercial. That's um, right. Uh, the actually the Patriot fun, Mobile is what we promote is it here. Patriot Chuck. now, okay. Patriot uh, Mobile. We're, we don't promote <laughs> Verizon. <laughs> I, <was laughs> I think Bongino <laughs> promotes Patriot Mobile, and we have Pure Talk. Well, Verizon hasn't seemed to be one of our advertisers. You know that they're one of our advertisers yet, Cat? Are they? I don't no, think I don't think they are. Uh, Verizon's got a little issue too that deals with something that I'm diametrically opposed to, which is the right to life, but that's a whole nother topic. But getting back to the vaccine, <laughs> not to be talking Get about right to, to life. Local level here, the, yes. the right to life. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, the Finance Committee of the County Board a couple of weeks ago um, actually denied the incentives, okay? And the County Board rules allow that if something is denied at committee level, it continued to go up, okay? So I went to the Executive Committee and we were uh, basically told that this was the thing to do, that we one of the rationales for doing it was, you know, hey, we don't want our people giving anybody COVID. And I said, you can't ever prove any of our people gave anyone COVID. I said, that's, a, that's just not a good rationale. And then I asked how they came up with the $1,000. We never really did get a solid answer. But the bottom line was the um, chairman of the county board um, did support it. And... Um, uh, his support, I just hope, as he continues to uh, go forward with this, that he remembers Reagan's 11th commandment, and that is, thou shalt not speak ill of another Republican. I mean, we are of the same party, and although we may disagree on this issue, I don't believe that my opposition to the uh, vaccine incentive should have me demonized as being evil or um, as someone who does who wants wishes death on anyone which has happens to some of us when we take that position you know um but anyway long story short then it went to the full it passed the executive committee it gets to the full county board and the chairman pulls it okay and the reason he pulled it was 
for the strangest reasons, and I haven't figured out this yet, it wasn't the Republicans who really wanted it pulled. It was the Democrats. Yes. And so that's that's the oddest thing that I'd ever seen. I mean, I had talked to a member of the Democrat, um, a Democrat on the county board. I said, I think I'm on the minority in this. She goes, no, I think you might be in the majority on this. We might be together on this. Now, I don't know what they're going to come back with. Okay, that's what I'm worried about. But um, it got pulled, so it has. There is no right now presently a vaccine incentive for uh employees of mclean county so that did not go before the full board on thursday then I it was guess. not voted i, on. I was wondering pulled. what happened because i didn't hear you know it into the media cycle that that was voted on which gets back to your point you know when we look at the decisions being made by the county board now that we know that the county board stands at 11 democrats and nine or 11 republicans nine democrats you see this flavor of a county chair of the board who is starting to I, I don't understand w the direction where do you think we truly are going if we're going to have an open McLean County uh, free from the, the craziness of mandates I know the mandate discussion we heard that from uh, Beck earlier or Bongino one of the two because we're doing a recap now Chuck on my show on Sundays uh, where they said that by November 9th, the federal mandate's going to come through, which once again is a federal mandate, which was never designed for the federal government to mandate anything. That's what governors do. We, we're very aware of that here in Illinois, that our governor is very fond of mandates and executive orders because he's been acting as, you know, out of edicts. Uh, and mandates I think and he's on his like a hundredth yeah, <laughs> executive yeah, order since episode. last year but so so where is the county how is the county going to follow because really we're not seeing a lot of um i don't know what's the word i'm looking for direction i guess well i think people should watch what the county board is going to do in the next month or so because this incentive plan it's going to come back in some form or another. Okay, mm. I don't know how it's going to come back yet. It's probably will come back in November. And um, now the WGLT. I know I'm not supposed to mention the other radio no, station. You can. We do. I just did. Uh, we call it. We call it the. Uh, pub, <laughs> we call it. We call it uh, government paid for radio on campus. But that's a. Well, they ahead. had an article basically where they had <laughs> talked to the chairman after the meeting, and um, I'm always Larry accepting reporters out here of what local reporters write in their stories because sometimes they don't fact check it i mean it's just it's just it's getting ridiculous anymore but anyway they quoted the chairman as saying that uh he uh actually also supports a mandate okay and i don't know if that will pass the county board i don't know if he can get a mandate through the county board but he might get some type of incentive through the county board now, so that's how would that they actually like enforce the mandate so say somebody didn't want to didn't want the mandate would that go before the county board or would the state's attorney have to prosecute a case if somebody said you know what i don't want a mandate here in mclean county and i'm not doing it well i'd be willing to speculate although this is pure speculation that don knapp doesn't want to enforce a mandate I mean, I'll be willing to speculate on that, but... It'd be difficult, uh, uh, especially with yeah. the Illinois Health Care Right of Conscious Act still intact. Well, and, and this brings up another point, and I know we kind of got a little bit ahead of it here, but there's a reason that they're considering this funding, right? Yeah, because we got... Uh, we're going to get approximately $32 million from the... Um, federal government oh the, the, because the federal government makes money yeah, the federal <laughs> government is the, one of the arguments is that we're not using local money to pay the incentive we're only using federal money because the federal government gave us the money so so they're not, cool with it yeah so we're since we're not taxing local taxpayers for the to pay for the incentive it's okay to do well, it let's okay? let's all be clear here and i know our audience gets this uh, the federal government is not in the business of making money. They're in the business of taking money. Mm. And contrary to President Biden's claim that $3.5 trillion will cost us nothing, um, this is what we talk about with the House divided. When you have a group of people who believe that this money that's coming into the county from the federal government or even into the state, that that money somehow is free money. It's not free money. And it's free money no, for a time period. because then they've got period. the hold over you. It's yeah. not if free anything. money. 
But it's easy to argue that, hey, we didn't have to raise the taxes for it. The Congress did. I mean, so how, how are you going to pay for that 30 some million we're getting? I mean, you know, so anyway, we're getting it. Uh, so, you know, it, it's there. If not, if, if it doesn't Could we refuse towards- it? Could the county refuse I, getting the money? I suppose the county could refuse it. I'd never really thought about That'd that. That'd be the issue. ethical thing to do, no? But I would I don't, think so. I don't think the county's going to refuse it. I think it's on the grounds that somebody else will just get it and, you know, we it, should spend it. It, it, it yeah. would probably go to the state of Texas or to Ron DeSantis in the state It'd of Florida. It'd probably go to Cook County or well, probably go gonna... to California where, you know, it's a pay for energy because yes. I don't have any energy in California. Yeah. So so it's this use it or or lose it type of mentality which has the system so broken and this is a concern, but I know that that's not why we had you here. We wanted to find out more about what took place. But there's other issues that I know that you can speak into, and I know that inquiring minds would like to know. The headline story now is the iPads being taken away from the incarcerated, the residents at McLean County Jail. What is taking place? How did this all come about? What is the true picture of what's taking place there well what happened was the county sheriff and the county sheriff does have control over the jail that's there there, there's no uh, honest debate about that he gets to control it and um uh he wanted to basically let the inmates have um tablets uh and a lot of these programs on these tablets are free educational religious and legal they're free but basically what he's saying is if you want some pay-per-view entertainment, watch a movie, you got to pay for it, okay? Mm-hmm. You got to pay it was it was 5 cents a minute. So if mm-hmm. they watch a 2-hour movie, what is that? 6 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then for incoming email, this is the way it was presented to us in our packet before the justice committee. It was 25 cents for incoming email. They had to pay for that, okay? And the Democrats objected to that on the grounds that, you know, um, you know, the county really ought to be paying for it itself, not the inmates. I mean, not not one Democrat objected to it on the grounds, oh, that's a high price. You're, you're, you're charging too much. You know, wasn't that wasn't the issue. It's just the county ought to be paying for it. And my response to this is that, you know, the McLean County taxpayers just spent approximately $39 million to expand that jail about five years ago. Yes. We've got a brand new jail down there. And we put $5 million every year into that jail every year to make it run right, okay? And we basically have a, a very good, you know, jail down there yes. that, that takes care of uh, the mentally ill and takes care, puts them in the proper spots and, and, and does everything for them. But, you know, the Democrats think that's not enough to spend on it. I mean, we need to now. We need to make sure that the prisoners get everything free, and it's not like they weren't getting things. Mm-hmm. Okay, they had stuff. Okay, but you know, I mean, now we should have them pay for their uh, their. We should pay for their movies and everything else they do. We're going to continue this conversation with County Board Member Chuck Erickson, also Attorney at Law, so we get a uh, an insight on both sides of the ledger here at Cities ninety two point nine, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond. In the eye of the school. When improved, David Paul Blumenschein <laughs> Show, a.k.a. the DPB Show, here at Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal. And if you're just joining us today, yes, we have new bump music, we have new lead-ins. It's pretty special. I, I do have to say that I've been here now for a little over a year with Cities 92.9. And when I started out, I didn't expect to have a regular Sunday show. I was asked to fill in uh, for a pre-recorded show for Benjamin Yount. And one thing led to another. I'd obviously, as I've told you before, and will tell you probably going forth for a long time, that I was had run for office for state rep. And through that experience, I think it led me here to radio. And I do appreciate you as our audience for not only texting in, but for calling in. I haven't given a shout out to our text line yet, which I should have done, but I'm just so enamored by everything going on today here coming back in studio after being gone last week with my family up in minnesota but you can always text us or call us at 
four five one nine two nine nine. Yes, that's new and improved too. It's one number. You can either text it or you can call in three zero nine four five one nine two nine nine. And before we went to break, we have Chuck Erickson, attorney at law, also county board member, means he's been elected to office and he represents us here in McLean County. Now granted it's by district, but he is a voice of conservative values. And what we were saying before going to break, we were talking about the tablets down at the McLean County Jail. And these tablets were removed and things are up in arms about why it is they were taken away, the cost of having tablets in the McLean County Jail and everything around that. But during break, we were talking uh, amongst ourselves here in studio, which we do very often. And that <laughs> kind of comes up with some of the best questions. Why is it that we even afford those people who are incarcerated uh, behind bars? I understand that goodwill, you want to try to re-instill values and everything into uh, a person, but yet at the same time have them realize that there's something that led them to where they're at. And giving them tablets and access to that, is there anything that says, states you are just reading, Chuck, that there's nothing in the Constitution that says we have to afford inmates, residents, uh, prisoners, Internet service? Well, I think the reason we give them things is because tr we are trying to rehabilitate them. We are trying to make them feel like, hey, let's try to move you on in a different path in life. But I mean, just to reiterate what I've already said, I think I said this, is that they already had free access, and this is my memo for the Justice Committee. Free access is provided to the law library, religious apps, Bible Gateway, and religious library, calculator, and some books. So they already have free access to that. What they're paying, going to be required to pay for is other stuff. And that payment was going to be tablet entertainment per usage minute was .05, an inmate in email per inbound message was 0.25. At least that's what my uh, packet says from the, the Justice Committee. And so, you know, no one's, no one's stopping them from doing anything. I mean, it's just saying, listen, you want some of this extracurricular stuff that goes beyond just, you know, you want to read a book or you want to read things, you're going to have to probably pay now, a little I saw the it. NAACP and Black Lives Matter, they showed up. And is anybody even asking the inmates, hey, do you mind paying this? Do you mind paying the, the 25 cents, the 5 cents for the luxury of internet? Well, probably the proper people to, to ask would probably be the inmate's family because mm -hmm. they're probably the ones paying for it. But, well, that's um, the only way that we can. Yeah. They're, they're not allowed to pay bills yeah, out of yeah. their, their uh, cells, right? I, well, I don't know about that, but the, the, the bottom line maybe is... Maybe they are because if they've got a tablet, maybe they can do their online banking too. <laughs> Here's I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of the situation, no. but it's it's getting crazy. This isn't solving problems, Chuck. And I know you said you wanted them to feel a certain way. And we're going to continue this conversation <laughs> because this is this is fascinating that we're having this discussion here in 2021 with all the other issues going on, societal issues, crime on the rise, violent crime on the rise. And we're talking about whether they're going to get Netflix or Hulu in the McLean County Jail. Well, John... We're John Sandage is right. I mean, if you I mean, he's saying that, listen, I run the jail. It's my jail. I mean, I'm going to run it. And well, he, and I, then, he gets to run it. So if you we, don't like the sheriff, you run somebody against the sheriff. We, we appreciate <laughs> John Sandage out there. And we're going to talk more about this when we come back to Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond. That's right. Here we are. And it just seems like the time flies. Sundays at from 1 to 3 here at Cities 92.9. I'm David Paul Blumenschein. This is the DPB Show. That's how we're calling it these days. Thank you to Cat Peterson across the way, who's joining us this Sunday in the absence of our other producer, Darren. But uh, she came in because we are leading off the show with all the new lead-ins, promos, bump music. So thank you, Cat, for all you've done. It's been a great show so far. And we have Chuck Erickson still with us from McLean County Board, also attorney at law. And we're going to kind of try to let him wrap this up a little bit because I think the best quote was from Chuck was, uh, sometimes I think we ought to just have these fights. And that's in regards to the tablets in the McLean County Jail. And there's an article out there and we'll have it up on our, our Facebook page. And if you'd like to join us today, you can call 309-451-9299. You can also text that line. No more do we have two lines. We have one line. You can text it or you can call into studio. 
But Chuck, that <laughs> this is a text that came in. I've got to read it. Okay, this is re really re good. Chuck, out. you're going to like this. At least your guest has a brain. Chuck is refreshing, and he's a voice among the stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't want to speak disparagingly of any of my fellow county board members. There's a lot of good ones, but um, I just want to say that, you know, I mean, when John, John controls the, the John Sandage controls the jail. It's his jurisdiction. We only have control over his budget. If the Democrats really want to control him, hey, let's have this fight. It's like I said to you guys. I mean, if they really want to run a sheriff's candidate who's going to, whose campaign theme is more free Internet for inmates, um, I want to see him do it. I mean, I just think that it's ridiculous. Sometimes we just need to have these fights and settle the issue. This is, but this is, what, this is why the, we let the show off with a house divided. Because we are so divided. I mean, these are the issues we find ourselves grappling with. See, and where is this money going? So I, I could only imagine what John Sandage is going through right now because they've, they're they ending cash bail in 2023, right? Yes. And then you go to the extremes of saying, oh, no, they can't pay for Internet either. So where where is the money going to come from in order to put that back into the... Well, it comes from the McLean County taxpayer. But as I said initially, the McLean County taxpayer is already putting $5 million a year into that jail to make it run. He paid 30... The, the McLean County taxpayer paid $39 million about five years ago, which we're paying off with bonds to pay off that jail. I mean, it's... And we've built a really good jail. It's a really so good it's, jail. It's not like we're treating our inmates badly. Okay? Well, I mean, <laughs> this this is my point, and this is what I learned from my years of being not only married to a public school teacher, but my own experience in the classroom with the youth and young kids. Is I've watched us with this thing called behavior modification, um, where we try to incentivize kids going to the office bad behavior and when i say that i'm watching this that we take kids into a situation where they should be given consequences and instead are given graham crackers and or maybe access to the internet to watch something and then place back in the class well it doesn't take very long before a kid like that learns geez my bad behavior gets rewarded we're rewarding behavior, and I'm not taking away the human element of it and the fact that there shouldn't be an educational system within the Department of Corrections or our county jail system. I want to see people improve their lives, become the best version of themselves. Is having a tablet and internet access the best methodology? When you talk about mental health issues, I believe a lot of the mental health issues that we have today and especially the growing mental health condition that we have today is because of the internet, is because of social media. 100%. And like I said, is anybody really asking the inmates? And this is what the problem is with the Democrat, the elite, the establishment. They are so far removed from the reality that these inmates are going through that I think these inmates would say to themselves, you know, I messed up. Yeah. And I I think that, yeah, it, it, having the internet on a tablet to stream videos and to entertain myself is a luxury. And I know they're not paying for it, but I mean, I think that everybody can agree on this is that that is a luxury and I don't mind paying for it because that's where th that's where I'm at. I mean, we pay for it and yeah. we are we aren't in a jail. Yeah, just keep in mind that they already had free access to the law library, religious apps, educational apps. They already had free access to some of that stuff. This is just extra stuff. I mean, I mean, it's just ridiculous to sit there and say, "Well, we're not trying to give them anything." That's ridiculous. It's these extras that probably they ought to pay for themselves. Okay. So that we'll let Chuck have the last word on that because there's so many things and we want you to plug in and continue to listen to Cities 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond. We have Chuck Erickson here in studio with us and he just went through a couple of the pressing issues facing the county board. But I'm asking you, Chuck, now to put on your attorney hat. I want you to listen to it a video. As I've shared with you earlier as we started our show, we're going to start recapping some of the best of the best conservative minds out there that we hear during the week, but yet some of you might not always be able to catch these pieces, but this one's coming from Mark Levin. This actually came out October 7th, and it seemed to be deep-sixed really quick, but it's in regards to how this 
attorney general put forth this memo to a couple different directors to the Department of Justice where they would start openly investigating parents who attend school board meetings and they speak out. Now, they said only the, the, only the parents who have committed violent crimes, which they haven't been able to compile a whole list of violent crimes that have been perpetrated against school board members by these parents who are speaking out openly against things like CRT, comprehensive sex education. Mm-hmm. Set up the set up Levin for us a little bit here, Kat. And right. So Mark Levin, he talks about how this is a it, it, they're waging war on parents at this point with this memo, and they're just parents going up to these school boards, and it's the same thing that is taking place at our Bloomington Public Library, and that's going to happen October nineteenth. There's going to be a that, that regular would, that session. would be Tuesday night, Tuesday and I think night. it starts at six o'clock yes. or six six thirty. And Mark Levin here, he says that it's waging war on parents, essentially. So here's Mark Levin. Parents nationwide have protested public school policies and practices associated with, among other things, the teaching or indoctrination of K-12 through students and certain principles of critical race theory and gender-related ideology. Bullet. Key Biden administration stakeholders, including the National Education Association, the American Federation of Teachers and others have combined to oppress, threaten, and intimidate parents to chill and prevent them from exercising the rights or privileges secured by the Constitution. To date, these efforts, though extensive, are generally proven ineffectual. Now listen, pull it. In early September, Biden administration stakeholders held discussions regarding avenues for potential federal action against parents with a key Biden Domestic Policy Council official, Jane Doe number one, and White House staff, John Doe number one. Stakeholders also held discussions with senior department officials, including at least one political appointee in the department's civil rights division, Jane Doe number two. Jane Doe number one, Jane, uh, John Doe number one, and others in the White House separately expressed concern regarding the potential partisan political impact of parent mobilization and organization around school issues in the upcoming midterm elections. Bullet, upon information and belief, at the express direction of or with the express consent of Jane Doe number one, Jane Doe number two, and other Biden administration officials, developed a plan to use a letter from an outside group as pretext for federal action to chill, deter, and discourage parents from exercising their constitutional rights and privileges. Bullet. Upon information and belief, in or about mid-September, work began on development of what became the Attorney General's Memorandum. Concerns expressed by department staff included one, the absence of federal law enforcement nexus and authority, which I have been pounding day in and day out. And two, the constitutionally protected nature of parent protests. However, Jane Doe number two made it clear this was a White House priority and a deliverable would be created. There you Bullet. have it. Bullet. Mark Levin. <laughs> so, Chuck... Are you familiar with this memo that went out from Merrick Garland? Somewhat, yes. Okay. So, basically, and I don't know about you, but we saw this in past in the past presidents, uh, or I should say the f- past past president's administration, where Barack Obama weaponized the IRS and, and, you know, tracking that. And, of course, we then moved through the Trump presidency and collusion, collusion, collusion. And when you talk about collusion, isn't that when they're having open discussions amongst national boards like the super, the, the school boards, the national association of school boards, the teachers unions, and they're putting pressure on the DOJ and the attorney general to put forth a memo against these because we've all seen these videos, right? Our, we, co- our we, commentators are covering them. We've, we've seen them on the internet. We've seen them on Facebook where parents are just upset and they're voicing their disgust with some of these issues, whether it be critical race theory, whether it be comprehensive sex education. 
And now they're saying, wait a minute, that's too violent. Is that the measure that we're using, that violence is determined by speech that we don't agree with? Well, you know, the amazing thing about prosecutorial discretion is the attorney general is exercising his prosecutorial discretion to go after this. And I think it's just wrong. And, you know, in the Virginia governor's race, one of the the Democrat candidates said, Terry McAuliffe. Yeah, the, the school boards get to decide what your kids learn. Yeah. And and the other candidates say, no, the parents get to decide what the kids learn. And we're at a fundamental uh, a fork in the road in our country. Who decides what the kids learn? The school boards, the government, or the parents? And if the parents don't stand, start standing up to this, um, it, it's going to get worse, not better. And I know they're colluding because I think the National School Board, they probably reached out to the Illinois School Board of Education and gave them a heads up. And that's why the District 87 school board (laughs) sent out a letter to one of our very own community members, Shane McCurdy, and said that he was, in in fact, acting violently. And he's supposed to have a hearing. But he received that October 1st. And then the memo came out October 4th. I'm telling you, this is collusion at the highest level. The National School Board of Education has been contacting all of the state boards of education and have been telling them you need to find instances of violence and but use it against them. But parents. here is the division. The state's divided. A house divided cannot stand, Chuck. Prosecutorial discretion is the way that you phrased it. Prosecu- Prosecutorial discretion. Wow, well, I can... It's I a hard got, word to say. It's like it, saying Mississippi sometimes. This is, well, prosecutorial <laughs> discretion... Where was the prosecutorial discretion when it came to the riots of 2020, 2019? That's my question. And that's what we're going to try to get an answer from you, Chuck, to see what your thoughts are. Because here we went through a full burning down of federal buildings, you know, but yet there was no discretion about going after those criminals. Hey, we just appreciate you joining us here at Cities 92.9. The news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond. Now, this is my kind of music here at Cities 92.9. I'm David Paul Blumenshine. You are joining me here at the DPB show. This is the new name of the show, but this is this is where my heart's at. This is what I hope to continue to, to bring to our time that we have together. On Sundays from 1 to 3, not only will we be doing a recap of all things uh, Hannity, Beck, Levin, Shapiro, Bongino, because I know we missed so much of that, and it's good to play a little bit of that here. But we're going to have the local news, and that's what we had with Chuck Erickson here, county board member slash attorney at law here in McLean County. And before we went to break, we played a clip from Mark Levin. And it was, it's, it's very, um, it's something we need to continue to talk about because we know that something has happened as something happened that day here, October 7th, where Merrick Garland decided to put out a memo that basically said they were going to, it sounds like, weaponize the FBI to get involved in local issues. And as far as... I'm sick. And as far as I know, Chuck, aren't local issues at the school board level for local law enforcement rather than the Federal Bureau of Investigation? That's what I think most law enforcement professionals and uh, prosecutors would tell you. Unless there's some federal issue involved, there's absolutely no reason for the FBI to be involved. And merely showing up at a school board meeting to say, listen, I don't like what you're teaching my kids doesn't raise a federal issue. Well, and that's that's what I thought, Chuck. And, and I understand there is a certain protocol amongst states, you know, our sheriffs. And I know that reaching out to our city... Uh, police chiefs, not only in the town of Normal, but the city of Bloomington, that they're going to request meetings, and they're having these meetings, right, Kat? You covered that in some of your news stories, right? That they've had these meetings, or will have these meetings? Well, they've said that they are willing to sit down and have these meetings once they're approached. So, both Bloomington and Normal Police Departments have not had any meetings with the FBI, but both did say that they're willing to sit down with the FBI. Now, I do believe now, correct me if I'm law, wrong, Mr. Attorney Erickson, <laughs> that they could shot, like shoot down the FBI if they were to ask for a meeting. 
Well, I, I, I'm not certain about that. Um, but, you know, I think probably as a matter of discretion, they probably should hear what the FBI has to say. I, to me, I'm not as bothered by that. It's just what they do with it after the meeting that would bother me. Because uh, basically, they should be telling the FBI, hey, this is our jurisdiction. It's not your, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with a federal issue. Yeah, and I feel so like it's really a slap in the really face. You really don't really need to be here. Well, I mean, and, the, and the fact that we continue to have these discussions, and going back to the theme of today here at City's 92.9, the news and talk of Bloomington Normal and beyond, and the David Paul Blumenshine Show, now known as the DPB Show, is that we are divided. The fact that we are at a point where parents, which unfortunately, we came to this point because for a long time, people, parents, were not doing their civic duty of showing up and holding these school boards accountable. And I say that from my position as someone who has run for office. Yes, these people, these school board members ran for office. They got elected. Therefore, they were going to take with them all of their ideological beliefs, their narratives, and they were going to run it down the pipeline. And that's what happened. So when it comes to look at who's to blame, it's us. That's the call to action. That's what I think you heard from not only Glenn Beck at the beginning of the show, but Dan Bongino and Mark Levin, that it's up to us. We need to continue to show up at these school board meetings. We need to continue to let our voices be heard. Not only at the school board meetings, I know that the county board member or the county board meetings when it comes to committee meetings, which is where most of its public comment, right, Chuck, it, County yes, I mean, you, you got to follow the rules, but I mean, people should follow these county board meetings here, especially what's going to happen the next several months. I mean, they really need to get in tune with it. And that is where we're going to leave it this week. Hey, appreciate you, Kat, in studio with everything you've done to, to just uplift this, this particular... Nope, oh, I caught up. There you go. That's where we're going to end it.